All right, we're gonna talk about fermentation and serving temperature control. So in brewing, one of the big leaps that brewers make is uh, fermentation temperature control. And uh, there are a couple different ways that we can do that. So the idea here is yeast strains all want a certain temperature to work at. And so after you've boiled, you transfer your fermenter, you put the yeast in and you want that final last step. So the fermentation to go as smoothly as possible. Certain yeasts want to work cold, certain yeasts like in the 50 degree range, some want to work in the 68, 70, and now we even have Kavik, which is up in the like 100 degrees, 95 degrees is recommended. So how do we do that? Traditionally, uh, the, it, it's just been said, go ahead and put that bucket fermenter into a closet in your home. So homes usually live between 65 and 75 degrees. That is perfectly fine. When you are starting out and you are using a bucket, go ahead and do that. The other option is to get into temperature control. So the simplest way and the way that I got into it was I got a cheap refrigerator off of Craigslist and I put on it an Inkbird temperature controller. There are other versions of temperature controllers. These seem to be the most popular, and I can tell from personal experience that they are the most reliable that I've ever used. I have three controlling my fermenters right now that have literally been on for, I don't know, four years, five years, and I've never unplugged them. Uh, even between runs, I just leave them on and they just keep working. So why would I change? Um, so what you do is basically you override that refrigerator's temperature control. So if I want it to be 68 degrees inside, I'm going to turn the fridge as low as it goes and plug that into the cooling side. And then into the heating side, you could use a reptile lamp like the infrared heating lamps or there's wraps that can go around that gently heat that fermenter. And you wrap that heater around it and then you put the temperature probe that looks like this, inside that fridge. Once you set the temperature that you want this to be at, say I set it for 68, it you can change this variable, but I always put it for like one degree. So if it gets to 69, it turns power onto cooling, which essentially lets the fridge turn on. Or if it goes low, 67, then it's gonna turn uh, the heater on. And so that's gonna gently bring the beer back up. So there are different ways that you can accomplish the heating, but essentially the cooling, you're just letting the fridge turn on. Um, I also overrode, I had an old GE, like 1970s refrigerator. That was my first kegerator. Super proud of it. Buddy of mine's got it now. Um, put two taps out of the front. Its thermostat was bugged. So it would just ice over inside. So I just put one of these on the side, set it to 34 or 35 degrees. And so, as soon as it hits 35 degrees, it shuts itself off. And then, um, yeah, basically it'll turn back on once it comes back up to temperature. So it just overrode the thermostat for it. So that's the idea behind this. Um, it also works for chest freezers. That's another common one for brewers that wanna both control the fermentation temperature, uh, but they also wanna cold crash. So a fridge, um, Said, yeah, you can do the same thing with a fridge. I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, but a chest freezer also works and uh, chest freezers are what people also use to dispense. So you're gonna hear that called a keezer. So I know I'm kind of bouncing around here for a minute, but it's gonna make sense in a sec. So fermentation temperature control in its most simple way is a used refrigerator or a new refrigerator, whatever, um, with an inkbird temperature controller. That's what I recommend. The next step up in that is once you've moved into either the catalyst fermenter that I showed you or stainless steel, that they have those coils that can go down inside and run glycol or cold water. Um, that also works on this. So the same idea, this temperature probe, instead of just being inside the fridge, is in a thermal well down inside the liquid. So the wort when it starts and as it turns into beer. So you're gonna get a more accurate reading and read on what's actually happening inside the fermenter because this is down inside that thermo well. Um, what happens instead of turning refrigerator on is that you're gonna activate the glycol uh, 
chiller. So actually you're activating the pump that's sitting down inside that glycol. So you're gonna cycle cold, ice cold 27 degree glycol through that coil and that's gonna drop the temperature of the beer inside the fermenter. And then you kind of have the same, like I have these uh, heater wraps that sit in contact with the fermenter if it needs to be heated. Um, that's about it for temperature control on the fermenters. Um, the serving side, obviously a kegerator is gonna have this built in, but behind me, I'm gonna show you basically, um, this is a walk-in chiller in no uncertain terms. It uses a window AC unit and um, what's called a cool bot. So the cool bot is another little box that you plug it in and you put a probe in the fins of the AC unit and then you also have a probe in the ambient and that will basically trick that um, window AC unit into going colder than it normally would because those usually go only go down to like 60. But I can keep this uh, whole walk in at 35 degrees with no problems even in the middle of summer and the cool bot also knows to not make it ice over by switching it on and off. Essentially it's heating up the sensor of the AC unit. So um, when it comes to temperature control, I think we've covered everything and you'll have the tools and the links down below so you can make your decisions. But um, temperature control is one of the top factors in final beer flavor. Yeast is a powerful influencer of flavor. And if you're not getting it at the temperature that it wants to be, then you're gonna have some off flavors, whether it was too low or too high. Um, and we wanna avoid that. So to give it the highest likelihood of succeeding and doing what it's supposed to be doing, temperature control is your friend.